occurred, it occurred to me that um, what certain forms of ableism were saying was that there was only one normal type of human mind and everything else fell short. If you didn't meet this sort of platonic ideal of normalcy, you had deficits and dysfunctions and, and those deficits and dysfunctions defined you. Well, what if there isn't one type of human mind uh, that is, you know, the only type of human mind that is good? And that's something that we were learning in a lot of different ways. Like, for instance, the gay thing. You know, there isn't one type of sexual orientation that is clearly the best, clearly the most normal. There is a there is a wide variety and there's a wide variety of gender identities. And, you know, we're learning about the multiplicity of, of the universe and of life on earth. And in fact, you know, one might even say that, you know, the sort of national freak out that America is going through now with white supremacists marching in the streets is it's people fighting that recognition that in fact, human life is diverse and various and that diversity and, and variousness help us as a society. They're not things standing in the way of progress. They enable progress. And so I would say that neurodiversity is the recognition that in communities of human minds, experience things differently, experiencing things differently, conceptualizing things differently, uh, being able to imagine things differently from some you know, phony, completely fictitious standard of normal is best for the future of civilization. And you know, if we survive this horrific era, and many of us will not uh, in the most dramatic sense uh, because of COVID. But if, however much we survive this era, um, the world is struggling towards a recognition of diversity as, as a good thing in, uh, in society. And I hope we make it.